forgive me, Lodge, for I have sinned. So today we are going to perform CPR on this piece of kitchenware, and I'm going to show you guys how to re-season a cast iron skillet. What's up? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Becky with Thankful Roots at Downfall Farms. And today, I need to be honest with you guys. I'm ashamed to even tell you. Let me tell the story first. So, I had used my cast iron skillet for taking a few pictures. And um, I didn't actually like cook with it or anything. I just had it out. It was a prop. You know, I used it for pictures for the blog. So, we had somewhere we had to go. I left it out on the table. Um, when we got back home, I pretty much forgot about it. The kids come in, and they spilled their pop right into my cast iron skillet. My cast iron skillet was involved in an accident. It was a hit and run. I'm pretty sure they were underage. So, I threw it into the sink because I had this mess to clean up, you know. And so, I like threw it in there. Um... Just set it in the sink. I was like, I'll take care of it in a bit. Cleaned up this mess. If y'all have kids, if y'all just life in general, you understand that, like, there's a lot of fires going on that you have to run around and put out. And so, I would kind of forgot about about this fire. And so, it sat in the sink. Um, that day, we had something else going on. And so, like I said, it was just a busy day. And so, I had out a cookie sheet it had been on the stove. I set it on top of my sink, left it. So those couple days, the next couple days, um, my husband was actually out of town. We had been really busy, and uh, like for supper, we went to my mom's house one day. We went out to eat another time. Like we didn't really cook at home for like two whole days. And I hate to admit that, but it's the truth. We were out. We went to family. You know, we did things. So about 48 hours later, pass. And I totally forgot that under my cookie sheet was my cast iron skillet just sitting in water for like two days. So, can you guys see that? Can you see its boo boos? There's no seasoning left on this bad boy. You can like see where there was water in it. But there is good news. Um, a lot of people sometimes kind of stray away from cast iron because they're like, oh, they're so, they're so finicky. There's so many things you can't do, you can do. Like, you know, there's just such weird care and I don't even want to get into it. But I'm going to give the same advice for cast iron skillets that I give for new parents. And that is, thank God they are durable. Kids are durable. <laughs> cast iron skillets are durable. The beauty is that we're going to season this bad boy today and bring it back to life. I'm going to do a little CPR on my cast iron skillet. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to start is by washing the skillet in hot soapy water. Now, when I originally found it, I immediately washed it and was trying, you know, trying to save it, but there was no such luck. So, I've already got my water ran in here. And uh, I've got nice in here, but I just want to wash it again and try to get as much crap off of it as I can. Now, if you are using a brand new skillet um, from Lodge, they actually all come from the forge already seasoned. So you don't need to worry about this when you're buying a new cast iron from Lodge. Um, but sometimes it's nice to keep up with it. Sometimes maybe your spouse throws it in the dishwasher and they didn't realize. I mean, there's about a million reasons why your cast iron can take a beating. But that's the beauty of it is that they really can take a beating. And you can bounce back from them very easy. So, like I said, get it real good. If yours happens to have like any rust in it, um, you are going to want to get like a Brillo pad and really get that rust off. Now, if it's a really old piece and you're having a hard time getting it off, you actually might need to take it to a machine shop to get it sandblasted. Mine isn't that far gone yet, 
So, because mine had just a little bit where it almost was like it tried to start rusting, um, I'm just using a general soft sponge. But typically, when uh, you are just washing your skillet, don't use a sponge, don't use soap. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. <coughs> so, we're going to dry it off really good inside and out, get it perfectly dry. My favorite thing, I like frying things in my skillet. I also really like making cornbread. I think nothing makes cornbread turn out better than a cast iron skillet. All right, so here in the sunlight, maybe you guys can see a little bit better, like just really how sad my cast iron skillet looks. Okay, I'm gonna get to seasoning. So there's very few things that you need in order to re-season a skillet. Um, obviously you need a boo-boo skillet. You need some um, all vegetable shortening like Crisco. I just have the generic version. Um, but you need some Crisco. And then inside your oven you're going to want to preheat it. If you have a regular stove, 375. But if you've you know, watched my videos before and you know me and my devil stove. I have mine set on about 325. Generally you want the skillet closest to the bottom. However, um, you want two racks. And so you want one on the bottom with maybe like a layer of foil. I actually use a really big cookie sheet. Um, so that way it will catch anything just in case like, you know, if stuff starts sweating and dripping off of this, it'll catch it and it's not just going to go straight into your oven. So I'm going to show you guys how I have mine set up. And the uh, cookie sheet is on the very bottom. And then the rack that my cast iron is going to sit on is directly in the rung above that bottom one. So my stove just gets way too hot. But if you have a regular stove, 375, put yours at the very bottom. You guys did just see me wash my hands, so I promise that they are clean. Um, I did take my rings off in order to do this, so that way my rings aren't covered in grease. And you might want to do the same. So what I do is I take a spoon, scoop out a big old hunk of vegetable oil using your hands. Sorry y'all, you're going to have to get a little dirty. You need to lather, absolutely lather your skillet up. Let's see here. You don't just barely rub it on, you know, like how you... Maybe put some butter on, corn on the cob. This needs to be lathered up. Your, your black skillet should be turning white. So make sure you rotate it, getting all those edges really good. Now, the important thing is not only are we going to be greasing the inside of the skillet, you actually need to get seasoning on the outside as well just to like overall keep the protection. So you're going we're going to be doing this to both sides. Told you we going to get messy. So make sure that it is practically white. I have actually tried using bacon grease before. <laughs> to go with my cast iron skillet, I thought it'd be better, have better flavor, you know. I, why not? I'm going to try it. So I did, and it did not work very well for me at all. Now some of y'all might, I honestly think that I didn't quite use enough. Um, don't be like me and grease your handle before you need to touch it, because these things are heavy. So wait for last to grease your handle. So I'd use that bacon grease because... Um, like I said, you know, bacon grease is gold. You can use it for everything. So I thought that it'd be fun and uh, it'd work out just fine and it did not. So stick with the vegetable oil. Gonna do a light coating out here just to get it good and seasoned. Um, mine does have that little like, see that little rim it falls down into. So, I'm not crazy about it being that thick in there. I might try to get that out. But, like I said, you just want to take it really good. And this skillet should be covered. <laughs> okay. You know, he 
You didn't need help until I covered in grease. Okay, hang on, babe. Be right there. Try to make it smooth and pretty. Voila, we're gonna stick it in the oven. grease everywhere. So what you're going to do is actually bake it upside down. And now we wait. We're going to let it bake for about two hours. Now make sure you check on it. Make sure it's not getting way too hot. But um, I think actually the Lodge cookware recommends baking it for an hour. But my granny and in my family We've always let it cook for way longer, so we're going to check on it in two hours. I'm going to go wash my hands. You guys, somehow when I plopped that bad boy in there, it missed my whole baking sheet. So, I do have now stuff that's dripped into the bottom of my stinking oven. Started smoking in here like a bar in the 80s. And now, my whole house, very, very smoky, very stinky. I'm very thankful, though, that today is our first day that we've had, like, 50-degree weather. So, all my windows and doors are open, and so I just wanted to hop on and let you know not to do what I do. Make sure that it is over that cookie sheet or over that foil, whatever it is that you're using to catch the grease, you need it and you need to make sure that you're actually on top of it so i'll see y'all in a little bit we're gonna go outside to get some fresh air <laughs> i wanted to show you guys what it looks like while it's baking look how nice and shiny that is i'd mentioned that something spilled into the bottom of my oven but i'm pretty sure that's not vegetable oil I think it's something that my husband did. He was actually the last one to use the stove. So we're going to blame Dylan. But I just wanted to show y'all that what your cast iron should look like once it's baking. So it randomly decided to start raining here, which was super fun since all my doors and windows were open. Since I tried to apparently burn the house down by reseasoning my skillet. So it's been a fun day here. <laughs> Two hours has passed. Uh, the timer's going to be going off six seconds so um it's been two hours i am going to turn off i'm going to turn off the stove and let the cast iron cool down inside the stove i'll see you guys in just a minute okay it's actually been about three hours since i started baking it took an hour for the skillet to cool down so let's see what it looks like <laughs> It is still warm. <laughs> Ta-da! Do you see how like beautiful, shiny that is on the back side? It seriously feels like there's like a plastic coating on it. Um, it turned out perfect. I don't see any problems. Sometimes, you know, you might need to just like wipe it out because where it sat on the wire, um, on the wire rack that's how mine is anyway it does have a couple little spots where I just kind of have to smooth it and so um, now we are just going to wipe it out okay so so now I'm just gonna give it a really quick wipe down um, just to make sure like I said anywhere like where it was laying on the rack it might have a little bit of residue because um, there's nothing worse than having a heavy old skillet full of food and then it's slicker than snot and you're struggling to hold on to it. So, hopefully you guys can see how nice, shiny, smooth, beautiful my skillet is. Like I said, I'm not kidding. These babies are so durable. They truly can take a beating, come back to life. All you got to do is just take good care of them. Even if you mess up, you know, it's still a learning curve. So even if you mess up, wash it with soap, use a sponge, don't think about it. I can't tell you how many times, honestly, like, that's what happened to me. Where you're just doing dishes, you grab it, you start, and you're like, oh no! So, this is easy. Um, I really do recommend cast iron. It is better for you. You know, you don't have to worry about any type of coating chipping off into your food 
Actually, some people even believe that it infuses the food with iron and it helps with your iron intake. And I'm just really happy. So shiny. Can't quit looking at it. So really quick, I did want to go over the care of a cast iron skillet or any type of cast iron cookware. Um, you want to make sure that you never use an abrasive sponge and don't use soap. Um, I have this, it's actually from Lodge, and it's a pretty soft bristle brush, so anytime that there's food in it, I can use this to scrub it out, and it really is truly easy if you just wash the skillet after you use it, and then completely and totally dry it once you're done washing it, it's going to look this shiny, this pretty every time. So... Um, that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you for joining me. I hope that... So that's it. That is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you go and make some delicious cornbread or fry some good chicken or do something amazing in your skillet. So as always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, come find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, all with the handle name of Thankful Roots. And check back on our YouTube often. On Mondays we talk about gardening, Wednesdays chickens, and Fridays for fixins. And so, you know, here we're all about good food, homegrown life. So I hope you join us. I hope you come grow with us and check back with us soon. And I'll see you guys later.